you know that in Fusion, you can actually create a hole a lot faster than doing a sketch and an extruded cut? There's an automated tool with lots of cool options like adding threads, counter bores, counter sinks, and I'll explain what those are in just a minute. And this automated tool, and it's called the hole command in Fusion. Let's take a look at it. To create a hole, go find it on your create menu. Go to the pull down if you like and choose create hole. It's H on your keyboard for a shortcut. And the things that it wants you to do is to use a, a face as a reference for this new hole. I simply click on this top face and then I can move it around in space. And it even has um, this reference center point that it's bringing up that I could snap to, even though I didn't sketch anything there or create anything. Over on the right, there's a couple dialogues to choose from. We can do multiple points, which we'll talk about in a minute. There's additional references. And then how do you want it to uh, solve? Do you want it to go all the way through? Do you want it to go up to next? And then what type of hole is it? Is it a standard hole or simple hole? Is it a counter bore? So like when you're thinking about maybe a screw slotting in or, or sitting in this, um, or like a, a a pan head or a button head screw. Um, so we've got the counter sink and we can adjust these, this, um, this beveled angle here. We can adjust that so that we can set this up how we like. Then there's some additional dimensions as well as do you want to cut everything that it touches? So if there is an additional body or another component, you can choose what it's cutting. We can look at that in a second. There we go, we have our countersink placed in there. And so incredibly fast. So some of the advantages is not only is it quicker that you don't have to, in this case, come in and do a revolved cut. So in a countersink, what I'd probably have to do is either do a revolve sketch and cut this out, or I'd have to do a cut and a cut and then come in with a chamfer and play with that angle. You can do all of this in one step, right? As well as, it brings you right back into the menu or you can adjust it or you can because it's a feature in the timeline you can right click and you can temporarily get rid of it you can suppress it and you can unsuppress and bring it back and solve so some really good advantages to using this feature over doing a manual sketch and extrude now what if this is a 3d print and we want to thread a bolt right into the center of this face We'll choose hole and then we'll, you know, drag it again to that center. We're going to say that this is a, we're going to say this is a tapped hole and I want it to be simple. So it's coming straight in and we're going to thread right into this hole. And this is where you can use different thread types. So if you knew the size of your bolt or screw that you're going to bring into this hole, you can come in and select from the menu, saving you time of having to look this up in a reference doc or <laughs> Google it or use AI to, to look this up. So this is an eight millimeter metric bolt fastener that's gonna thread in. And what I wanna do, it's gonna be right-handed. I want to make sure and choose modeled. The difference between modeled and not is this is a, an aesthetic thread. Let's click okay and look at it. So if, even though this looks threaded, it's not. And if we were to 3D print this and slice it, it's not gonna see threads. For example, if we go to wireframe, we should not see any, uh, any threads or anything. We still get this cosmetic thread, but you can see there, there are no differences. This is a simple cylinder. The reason that Fusion even has this option and this option exists in most of the CAD modelers out there like SolidWorks, like Inventor. The reason this exists is so that if you are doing a standard thread, let's say you had 12 different holes that were all threaded and you wanted to remind yourself or the, you know, the fabricators that this should be threaded, this is a nice visual and it doesn't cost you anything from a performance standpoint. It doesn't take time for this to rebuild in your timeline Instead, you have a thread call out and then it may be even on the 2D drawing, you can call this out and say that you need this standard thread to be tapped or however it's gonna be um, fabricated for you. 
this is cool for if someone else is building this for you, basically, and it doesn't slow you down. But for most of us, if we're creating our own custom design, that's where that modeled option is really good. You click OK, and now it's creating the real threads that we could slice and then 3D print. One quick gotcha to be aware of is that I, there is a little bit of shrinkage that happens when you 3D print. So when I've done these threads, even though they were perfect by design, they were a little tight when it came to my 3D print. And there are ways that you can calibrate, for example, your Bamboo Labs type printers. They have some calibration options to where you're not going to get that kind of shrinkage. But just something to be aware of that maybe sometimes you might need to scale up or just accommodate it in your 3D printer. What if you want to create a bunch of different holes strategically for this whole command? Come up to sketch and select the face that you care about. And I would come over to find point. And this is where you can use the point command to place the holes that you want. Now, I'm just going to place them kind of at random, right? Now I can place holes there easily. Just for sketching purposes, if you want to be more accurate and do dimensions, you might help you to sketch the reference or reference geometry of like a rectangle. So I select, I create this rectangle, I double click on it, I hit X, it's now a reference rectangle. And now I can place my points right on this reference rectangle, maybe in the corners, maybe, um, you know, in the diagonal portion, wherever you want this thing, you can use this as a reference for your points. And that might be a little easier, faster than dimensioning everything. I still need to dimension this, but that's one strategy is just using other reference geometry to get your points where you want them. Now, do I even need to place the points? Let's try this. So if I do a reference rectangle and now we'll come up and do the hole command, is it going to let me use that reference rectangle? Come to hole and then make sure the sketch is showing visibility is on. Great. It's not picking up any of these points that are in that, that rectangle unfortunately. So instead, what I need to go back to is that sketch. I have the rectangle. I'm going to place some points right on the rectangle. So I'm placing it in the corners. So you need to place points where you'd like your holes to go. Finish the sketch. And now we'll go to the whole command. And now we'll choose the multiple. And we'll choose all of these points. And we're going to have these threaded holes. So Fusion remembers your last uh, selections that you just made in this part. So it's remembering this tapped hole that was an eight millimeter size. And so I want to make sure they're all modeled and I'll click OK. Now I have all of these holes exactly where I want them and it is dynamic. So if we go back to the sketch down below and hit edit sketch, if I were to stretch this, move this, redimension it, make changes, move the sketch points around, click OK, your holes will update. We talked about how a series of sketch points can be your reference. The other thing that you can do is you can choose hole and then you select the face where it goes and then use edges that lets you effectively do dimensioning in the dialogue. So let's look at it. So do reference and select one edge. It will place a dimension. So it's almost like it's sketching and dimensioning for you. So if you don't want to add a sketch and you're trying to do this as fast as possible, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's really faster to do it this way, but if you just don't want to have to go mess with a sketch, this is, this is great. Hey, so I've created a series of cheat sheets for you. It's for the community. It's free. Go check those out and you'll get a daily tip from me on fusion design principles and 3D printing, and if you hate emails, just hit unsubscribe. What if you had two components and you wanna put a hole in between both? Well, let's do that real quick. Let's do a new component. We'll make it the top, and I'm not gonna activate it. I'm not ready to use it yet, and we'll make one more. Make it the bottom, and click OK. So I have two components. The top one is a, you know, we'll do something simple, just a quick block going up. It's a little bit bigger than I wanted, a little shorter. Great. 
And next we're going to do the bottom. I'll double click and make sure this little dot is activated. And then on the bottom, we're going to do effectively the same block. So these are two components that are really similar sitting next to each other. One is going up, one is going down, and we're going to put a hole in between them. Okay, so we'll go back to the top level. I'll click on this little uh, button here, and this is all for assemblies. I'm going to use some colors. I'm going to hit A for appearance, and then over on the right, I'm just going to drag on some colors. Oh, I don't have those downloaded. If you have the little arrow on the right, that means you need to download it. So I'm going to drag on uh, some red for the top and some Christmas green. How about blue? How about, there we go. I have blue downloaded. Perfect. All right. So you can see them a little bit better now. So now that I have the two components, I'm going to choose hole and I'm going to choose this top face. And if I'm do, we're doing a counter bore and I want it to have clearance so that I can drop this fastener in very easily and not thread in necessarily, I'm going to select these from the menu and then come down and make sure and select the size of fastener that I know. It's an M10 and I would like the fit to be very loose. So if I do tight or close, you can see that it tightens up, especially in the, the hole cut out at the bottom. And so we can adjust kind of how tight um, this fit will be. This is a nice way to choose from the menu in creating this hole between two components. Now I want to make sure that the cut goes all the way through or is deep enough. So when I, you know, look from the side profile, obviously this is cutting all the way through and we can set that with a distance or we can set it all the way. Lots of different ways you can set in the menu, but for here, I'm going to click okay. And now I have this hole that cuts through both and it's sized for a very specific fastener. Now in the fastener, I think I forgot to mention what type of fastener? Is it a socket head? Is it a hex head bolt? Is it a machine screw, right? So I love that there is this menu for some of these hole types to make this a little bit faster. Okay, so I'm showing how to do that with the hole command. When it comes to dropping in an actual fastener and cutting around it, I'll show that in a following video where we talk about inserting fasteners. Hey, thanks for watching another video here on Fusion. I'll see you guys tomorrow.